Welcome to Morning Faith. My name is David Moore. Today's topic is the church. Have you ever thought about the church, not as a place, but as a community? The scriptures that we'll be talking about are Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 through 20, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Every person has a different perspective on what church looks like. Whether that perspective is good or bad depends on their personal experience there. To some, a church is simply a building. But in the Bible, God establishes the idea of the church being the people, not the place. What does fellowship mean to you? Maybe a friendly association, especially with people who share one interest. The way that a person feels about church from their first visit can determine whether or not they ever consider coming back. A negative experience could last their entire life. However, one positive encounter with someone in a church can have just the opposite effect. God intended the church to be a sanctuary and a comfortable environment. Church should not be intimidating. However, some people come to a new church who often feel uncomfortable, and in some cases, intimidated. Now, for the ones that are a bit unsure anyway, they look for flaws which give them an excuse not to come back. I believe that the church is not just a building. It's a community. God desires the church to be a community where everyone is welcome and feels as though they belong without judgment. How many of you have actually heard of the day of Pentecost, 49 days after Easter? It is the day that many believe that the church actually started, while others believe it had already started. The importance here is that this is the day that all of the apostles came together along with many other believers, which can be found in Acts 2, 1 through 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus told them that they would be, in Acts 1, 5. Let's read Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Luke writes about how people of the church came together to grow in faith and in fellowship. Think about a time where you were able to lean on someone in the church in a time of need. How did that help you through your struggle? We know that there are countless trials and hardships in our lives. As you know, when you're seeking a safe place to go, the church can provide you with comfort, sympathy, fellowship, and can even help you grow as well as it can positively impact your lives. When we come together in fellowship, and by standing on the foundational beliefs that we do, we have a support group against the worldly beliefs. As Christians, there's a special bond between the people of the church. It is important for us to make sure that you feel as though you can openly share your from-the-heart opinions in the church without judgment. We want to present the benefits that come with having a community within the church. As I have often heard, this is our extended family. In the scripture, we learned about some of the positive examples that a church should look like. Examples that a healthy relationship within a church can provide include comfort, guidance, fellowship, spiritual growth, and others. It is our responsibility as part of the church community to create unity within our church, as everyone else does for us. So here's some questions to think about based on Acts 2, 42 through 47. So based on the scripture in Acts, What's the first thing that comes to mind when you start thinking of the word church? Why do you think all the believers devote themselves to fellowship? How is fellowship with believers significant in your spiritual growth? And what do you think some negative things are that could happen if you aren't devoting yourself to fellowship with Christians?
fact. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. So what is the benefit of being united in the church rather than being divided? What if you aren't constantly connected to the church family? Is it really that bad for you? When Paul says, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose, what do you think that purpose is that it refers to? Think of yourself as twine. Twine by itself is strong, but combined with other twine and with a common purpose, many strands of twine cooperating make rope, which is stronger than the parts that make it. Based on this scripture, we learned about how God gave us the church as a path to Him. So let's read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. So Christ Himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip His people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So how do you think the church has equipped you to grow in your relationship with Christ? Why is it important to continue to mature yourself in faith? What does that even mean, mature yourself in faith? Although God has an ideal image of what the church should look like, not every church ends up looking that way. But God uses each of us to build the church into what He desires it to be. Each person plays a role, and together we are strong. So remember, the church is not just a place. It's a community. Thanks for listening to Morning Faith. For other podcasts, please visit us at 316ministry.cc. If you'd like to donate to this effort, please locate the Donate button at the top of our webpage. All donations help to build these podcasts and help grow the kingdom of God. Thank you, and have a blessed day.